glad that you have joined us this morning. We're going to have an epic time, a phenomenal time in the presence of God, just worshiping Him, praising Him. I know heaven is already down on earth. I want you to get your families together and in that room, and the presence of the Lord is already filling that place. Over to you, Mom. Good morning, family. It is so good to be Hallelujah. just worshiping and praising God this morning. And even as we do it together, I know we may be in our homes, but our hearts are connected. So enjoy our morning service and remember that we love and miss you all. Amen. Well, come, let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we come in no other name but of your Son, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place and everywhere that your precious sons and daughters are watching or listening. Full, change, charge the atmosphere. We yield more to you, Holy Spirit. You are in charge. Come and dwell in our praises. And as our praises go up, we know the blessings come down. We thank you. Be with us now, even as we come around the table. Your name be glorified, Jesus. We ask it in no other name but of your Son, Jesus Christ. Well, friends, sit back. If you feel like standing wherever you are, stand, dance, praise the Lord. And I want to say to you, um, get ready with your communion, your, your wine, your bread, we're going to serve that later. And I'm going to hand you over to the team right now. Amen. Good morning, church. Are you ready to praise God this morning? Get up from wherever you are and let's just give praises to our King. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When night has fallen and faith is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not. You won't give up on me, you won't give up on me, your love is holding on. to me Now there's no stopping what you have started until it is complete When my mind says I'm not good enough God you're enough for me yeah. I've decided I'm not giving up Cause you won't give up on me You won't give up on me
get into a time of worship. Wherever we are, let's lift our hands to our King. Let's raise His name on high. We sing of your beautiful
That represents your broken body and the blood that you shed. Help us to prepare them, Lord, not just appositely, but with a sense of seriousness. We thank you, we praise you. Amen. Well, friends, I hope you got your emblems, the bread and the wine. And I'm reading from the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And verse 27 says, So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of Him, and I'm reading in the Amplified Version, this is what happens, will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Wow, that's a serious statement. Friends, I implore you by God's mercy, as we come now to partake, I'm going to give you a, a moment or two. If there's something separating you from God, if there's something that you know is causing a blockage between you and God, before we partake, I want you to put that right I don't know what it is and we don't know. We don't need to know. But God knows and you know. So I'm going to give you a moment. And I want you to make that right with God. Don't pass this opportunity of not partaking. Put that right. It's an opportunity right now. If somebody has caused you pain and hurt, forgive them. If you harbor any bitterness, unforgiveness in your heart ask God to forgive you and say Lord I hand them over to you I release them in your name take a few moments I pray in Jesus' name be released. Thank you, Lord. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 11, 23, For I have received from the Lord Himself that instruction which I pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the night in which He was betrayed, He took bread, Father, even as this morning we prepare our hearts, Lord, to partake of your hymns this morning. I pray, Father, for the bread this morning, that, Lord, we will always remember the price you paid on that cross. And, Lord, we will realize and understand that it is, Lord, because of your great love that you have done it for us. Thank so, Jesus. Lord, even as we partake, Hallelujah. may we understand, Lord, your greater love for us. We ask, Father, that you would bless us even as we partake of this this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is, this represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me. You may share your bread wherever you are. We'll partake the bread and the wine together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant ratified and established, hallelujah, in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. Let's pray for the emblem that represents the cup. God, our Heavenly Father, and even Lord, this emblem that I hold in my hand, the cup that represents your blood, your precious, mighty blood that was shed on Calvary. I pray, Lord, we will never partake unworthily. Thank you for shedding your blood. Amen. And when he had taken it, the cup and the bread and given thanks, verse 26 says, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until He comes. Let us eat together. Let us drink together. Thank you so much, family, for sharing communion with us today. And I want to get into straight into God's Word. And uh, thank you, family. Thank you for sharing with us. Yes, it's amazing. When you share with your family together, there's a sense of telling the devil, no matter what's going on, we are united. Amen! Now, many of you got a glimpse of my sermon today by the title when light stands next to darkness darkness falls and I I preached not this but a sermon close to this and I want to take you today straight through to the book of um, 1 Samuel Amen and I want to firstly before I get there, I want to ask you to get your Bibles ready or get it out and turn with me. It's important or your electronic devices that you use to uh, read God's Word because when you follow, it sticks in your mind. 1 Samuel chapter 5, I'm going to read the first verse and then I'm going to paraphrase what the entire story is in the scripture. After the Philistines captured the Ark of God, they took it from the battleground at Ebenezer to the town of Ashdod. Verse 2, they carried the Ark of God into the temple of Dagon and placed it beside an idol of Dagon. Friends, the Ark back in the day with Moses it asked the Ten Commandments, the promise that God had given Moses. It represents and represented rather the presence of God. Hallelujah. Friends, the ark represents power, represents the light. Hallelujah. The Philistines captured the ark of God and took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Friends, Ebenezer means divine assistance, the light. And Ashdod means a stronghold. Can you straight away see the conflict? Friends, this symbolized that it was an attempt to capture God's glory, God's presence. And I'm going to take you through a few points today. Friends, we have modern day Philistines today. That are, that are trying to capture and remove God's presence from our society. How true is this? And I preached part of this sermon way back, sometimes last year. 
when nobody dreamt and even thought about a lockdown. Yes. Nobody dreamt that there would be such a virus. And I don't give any time of glory to this coronavirus. It's from the pit of hell. But the point I'm making, modern day Philistines are trying to silence the truth. That's why the Philistines captured the ark. The modern day Philistines, today's Philistines are trying to kill our joy. Come on, take a look around you and see the people that are petrified and are terrorized. Modern day Philistines are trying to murder peace. Oh, yes. I say no more. And friends, the modern day Philistines are trying to bury hope. I see so many people. I visited so many people. I prayed for so many people during this critical time of our lives. Hope has been shattered. I could imagine how the Israelites felt at that point in time. I can imagine how Moses felt. The good news is, friend, like I said in our previous live stream, Jesus still lives. Jesus still saves. He still heals. He still delivers. Jesus still sets the captives free. And the good news of all news, Jesus is coming back again. Hallelujah. Yes, there are spirits today in our cities, in our world today that is trying to have its grip over our society. There is the spirit of Pharaoh that is holding people captive in Egypt, in their bondage, in their sin. There's the spirit of Goliath that comes out mocking and intimidating the children of God. There's a spirit of Jezebel that makes people hide in caves with sexual perversion and sin. Oh yes, and there's a spirit of Absalom causing division. How often we see that, friends? But I have great news again. There is a spirit more powerful than all these spirits put together. And today I'm declaring, irrespective of what we see on the news, what we read on social media, what we see on TV, what we hear about what's going on in the hospital, what we read in the newspapers, there is a spirit that's the most powerful spirit then all these other spirits put together. Friends, it's called the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Type in your biggest amen. God's word, it says in Zechariah 4, 6, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Friends, I declare today in Jesus' mighty name, Powered by the Holy Spirit. For every spirit of Pharaoh, there is a Moses. Hallelujah. For every spirit of Goliath, there is a David. For every Jezebel, there is an Elijah. Amen. And for every spirit of Herod that's trying to kill Jesus, there is the power of God. Hallelujah. Friends, and I want you to go and read this scripture and this part of this portion of scripture to get a clearer understanding. 1 Samuel 5. Friends, we see the Philistines brought the Ark of the Covenant and they placed it in a temple next to the idol of Dagon, next to the statue of Dagon. Friends, just like we are experiencing today, truth is standing next to falsehood. Yes, truth, the ark that represents the truth, the presence of God. Today, it's standing, truth is standing next to falsehood. You make that interpretation. Time to be politically correct is over. 
It's time to take a stand like Peter did. He stood up first with the rest of the disciples and declared, these men are not drunk. Hallelujah. Friends, look what happened. The next morning, the people came into the temple and they found Dagon falling on the floor. Fallen on the floor, rather. Friends, why? Two objects cannot occupy the same space. Let me repeat that. Two objects cannot occupy the same space. Your past and your future cannot occupy where you are right now. Your dreams and your nightmares cannot occupy the same space in your life today. I declare that fear cannot stand in the place of faith. Hallelujah. I declare in Jesus' name again over you, over your family, over your business, over wherever you operate in, that holiness will not stand where sin is. Amen. Type me a big amen wherever you are. And I say, and I prophetically speak this into your also. Whatever negative and, un and ungodly is trying to occupy the space in your home, I am declaring in Jesus' name that before this live stream is over, that Dagon is falling down in the name of Jesus. Friends, I can stand here because I'm a living testimony of this. I say to you today, your problem will never stand in the way of your promise. Hallelujah. Your problem will never stand in the way of your promise, of God's promise to you. Your sickness will never stand in the way of your healing. Your sin and my sin will fall down because righteousness is taken over. God's righteousness is taken over. Friends, no disease will stand in the way of your dreams. God gave you a dream. God gave you a vision. No disease will stand in the way of that dream. Hallelujah. Your past will never stand in the way of your future. Your sorrow will never stand in the way of your joy. Let me repeat that. There's so much of sorrow around. But I declare to you today, even those that have lost loved ones, your sorrow will never stand in the way of your joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. See, the first time the Philistines picked up Dagon and placed it, they placed it next to the Ark of the Covenant again, the Ark of God. Yes, Dagon fell the first time. The next morning they came up, picked up Dagon and placed it back next to the Ark of God. What does that represent, Pastor? What are you, why, why did that happen? And I know everything in the Bible has a significance in today's living. You see, friends, that's what people like to do today. People love to resurrect what God has crucified. And they like to crucify what God has resurrected in your life. Let me repeat. It's people's nature today to resurrect what God has crucified in your life. And it's people's nature to crucify what God has resurrected in your life. Friends, when we try to pick up the things that God has removed, sorrow enters in. Yes. Defeat enters in. We open the doors when we pick up those things that God has removed. When God removes people in your life, it's there for a reason. Let them go. Let them go. God has a reason why He's allowing them to leave. I'm not saying, you know, you've got to phone all these people and say, no, I've heard that God has now taken you out of my life. No, friends. Do it in love. The Holy Spirit will give you that Noah will give you that opportunity. Friends, 
I declare today that whatever God has removed you, He will replace it with something better and bigger. Hallelujah. Whatever God has removed, God will replace it with something bigger and better. Now let's see. Let's go back to our story. Look what happened. After they placed Dagon next to the Ark of the Covenant, the second time when he had, it had fallen down, it fell again. And this time when Dagon fell, read the scripture. Its legs and the top and the, its head and hands broke, left only its torso. Friends, I say again that that broken thing that is lying on the floor, I say never again in Jesus' name will it stand in the way of your progress. It is gone once and for all like we are praying for this pandemic to end. And I declare never again in Jesus' name. Never again will you be broken hearted. Never again will the devil rob you of your finances. Never again. Friends, there's the stillness. And all this time, the ark remains still. That's how God works, friends. I said last time round, there's power in God's stillness. That's why He declared in His word, Be still and know that I am God. Just be still. Why will you be still? In the time you are still, just like the ark stood still it didn't even move God is busy working in the time of this pandemic when everything seems all falling down and cracking and burst, bursting at the seams be still and know God is there friends God is calling you to be the light because when the light enters darkness, I have never seen any light being overpowered by darkness. Hallelujah. Why? Light always overpowers darkness. Imagine if we stand in an open field on a dark night and we all have a little light and we place it next to each other and we hold that light up. The more people we get to shine the light, the brighter that place will come. In the same way, the more people we get to shine the light, the light of God. That's what God calls us to be. The light, the salt of this earth. Imagine the impact we will bring to this society, to this world. God is counting on you to be the light. Because when you, the light, stands next to darkness, darkness must fall, just like Dagon. Not it can, maybe there's a chance. No, darkness must fall. I'm calling on you today. And more importantly, God's calling on you and your family to be the light. People of Africa praise ministries. God has called us as a ministry to be the light and impactful people in our community. And wherever you are listening from other ministries, God has called your ministry together with you and your family to be the light. Because when light shines, it overpowers darkness. And I'm going to close with this, friends. I love that song says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It's going to shine till Jesus comes. Hallelujah. This little light of mine, I can remember my late dad singing this, playing his mouth organ and the accordion and guitar. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Yes. Friends, God is calling you. And I'm speaking again to priests. Is your light shining to make your household shine for the rest of your household? 
Because when light stands next to darkness, darkness falls. Are you making darkness fall today? Oh, we all fail so many times. But today I want to say to you, in the midst of your failures, God is taking all of those failures and turning them into successes. Take your weak hands. Place it into the strong hands of the master. God says, let your light shine. Let it shine for Jesus. Come, let us pray. Once again, Father, we come in no other name but of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for this time we've had together. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name again. We are so guilty of covering our lights. Too concerned about what people are going to say. Oh, they are holy Joes. Oh, who died and made them God? Father, we can say that our God, His name is Jesus, died for me. That's why I'm going to stand boldly and declare my light is going to shine. Oh, we are people of many failures. But thank you for your saving grace and your mercy. And today, Lord, for all those that are listening, for all those that are, are, are watching, yes, Lord, we have failed you so miserably. But today, we stand up and we make our lights to shine. And we're going to see darkness fall before our very eyes because two objects light and darkness cannot occupy the same spot we thank you we praise you in Jesus mighty name Amen well friends our time's up again thank you so much for joining us we've had a great time in God's presence heaven is down here on earth and I want to just encourage you um, your tithe is your covenant with God I want you, uh, we encourage online giving and um, you will get a message from us. I've talked to the people of Africa Praise Ministries, members and friends of Africa Praise Ministries. You will get a note from us uh, giving you our online bank details. Please, it's not to me, it's not to my family. It's your commitment to God. I encourage you to honor that commitment. It's your covenant. Wow, our time's up again. So until next time, this is Pastor Henry Samuels and family praying that you remain touched and changed in Jesus' mighty name. Stay blessed. <laughs>